Hello and welcome to this presentation on hypertension and pregnancy. My name is Dr. Kimberly Cheatham. During this presentation, we will be discussing the diagnosis and management of the major hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. Hypertension in pregnancy is defined as a blood pressure greater than or equal to 140 systolic over 90 diastolic. The position of the patient and size of the cuff influence blood pressure readings, so it's important to use the correct technique. Several categories for hypertension in pregnancy exist and vary based on the timing of diagnosis and associated signs and symptoms. These four questions can assist the clinician in differentiating between the classifications of hypertension and pregnancy. The first category we will discuss is chronic hypertension. When women with pre-existing hypertension become pregnant, they're placed into this category. Because many women may not know that they have hypertension before pregnancy, the detection of an elevated blood pressure on two separate occasions before 20 weeks gestation also meets the criteria for chronic hypertension in pregnancy. Chronic hypertension is a cause of kidney damage, so evaluation for the presence of pre-existing proteinuria should be performed. Obtaining a 24-hour urine as early in the pregnancy as possible will establish a baseline amount of proteinuria. Laboratory should otherwise be normal and symptoms are absent. Management of chronic hypertension in pregnancy is outlined here. Antihypertensive medication is prescribed only for women with blood pressures greater than about 150 over 100 to protect the fetus from unnecessary medication exposure. Because hypertension can affect the growth of the fetus, regularly scheduled ultrasounds are performed and antenatal testing is ordered in the third trimester. These patients are at increased risk for developing preeclampsia and should be followed closely in the second half of pregnancy. The next hypertension category is gestational hypertension. This is hypertension diagnosed after 20 weeks of pregnancy in a previously normotensive patient. Proteinuria is absent, lab is normal, and symptoms are also absent. During evaluation of gestational hypertension, preeclampsia should be ruled out. Frequent outpatient visits are scheduled because these patients are also at increased risk for developing worsening blood pressures or preeclampsia. Similar to chronic hypertension, ultrasounds are obtained monthly for fetal growth, third trimester antepartum testing is performed, and medications are prescribed for blood pressures greater than 150 over 100. Preeclampsia is diagnosed after 20 weeks of gestation and comprises a persistently elevated blood pressure, proteinuria, and sometimes changes in laboratory values or the presence of symptoms. Preeclampsia is divided into mild and severe forms. Risk factors for preeclampsia are listed here. The etiology of preeclampsia is unknown. However, we do know that the pathophysiology involved is maternal vasospasm throughout the body. This vasospasm causes a variety of signs and symptoms, some of which are listed here. Preeclampsia is a common condition that occurs in up to 8% of women. The only cure is delivery of the baby. The criteria for mild preeclampsia are listed here. Criteria for severe preeclampsia are listed here. The patient only needs to have the presence of one of these findings to be diagnosed with severe preeclampsia. Abnormal laboratory findings or the presence of symptoms automatically makes a diagnosis of preeclampsia severe, even if blood pressure or proteinuria does not otherwise meet severe criteria. The management of preeclampsia at term is delivery. Women with severe preeclampsia are at a higher risk for the development of seizures known as eclampsia. These women should be administered intravenous magnesium sulfate during labor for seizure prophylaxis. Most clinicians do not give magnesium sulfate to women with mild preeclampsia. HELP is an acronym for hemolysis, elevated liver enzymes, and low platelets. These findings are considered to be a severe form of preeclampsia, even if other criteria are not met. Management includes administration of intravenous magnesium sulfate for seizure prophylaxis and delivery. 
Eclampsia is the presence of seizures in pregnancy unrelated to other diagnoses. It typically occurs in the setting of hypertension and proteinuria. Seizures are self-limited. However, they can recur, so precautions should be taken to prevent maternal injury as preparations are made for delivery. This concludes this video presentation on hypertension and pregnancy.